This is a Soulfire production. This is my first podcast I am recording in 2022. So exciting. I'm pumped about this year. I think 2022 is going to be a great year. I feel like for me individually, it's really going to push me. It's really going to push me out of my comfort zone and bring some shit up for me. (laughs) And I'm ready for it. (laughs) But, you know, every episode that came out before this, I had recorded earlier. We needed to be done by early December just to make sure the production team had plenty of time and everything. So I had a nice little break in there. And I really needed that time. It's been a time of intense self-reflection and a lot of shifts over the last few weeks. And I kind of wanted to talk about some things that have been coming up for me over the last couple of weeks. I've been in this really weird space the last week, especially, you know, that time between Christmas and New Year's where nobody really knows what they're doing anyway. But I was really excited about that because I love times like that when everybody else is distracted. I'm like, oh, this is my little energy pocket my own little energy pocket where I can do all the stuff I want, I've been wanting to do because at other times, sometimes it just feels like there are certain things that I want to do that just don't get done. Anyway, so I was really excited about it, but I literally couldn't do anything. All I could do, all I could do was basically just sit, reflect, talk to my guides, journal, pull cards all day. So if you just watched me, you'd think I was just sitting on the floor doing nothing. I was doing all kinds of things, but it was a lot of energy work. It was a lot of reflection. (laughs) That and then sleeping. I'm going through some crazy ascension symptoms. I know I'm not the only one. I've been so achy and sore and just exhausted. And it seems like no matter what time I go to sleep, I still sleep in. I've been sleeping a ridiculous amount. I, I, yeah, it's been wild. And I feel like my whole body, my whole system is recalibrating. And just the really big theme for me is like this rebirth, this rebirth coming up in January. And I feel like a lot of people are going to be going through that as well, really shifting a lot of patterns. And so in that rebirth stage or coming into that, I've been here before. You've seen me go through this before. And I noticed a lot of similarities in that process. And before like the the full rebirth, right? There's the death. And there's like this void space in between, which is actually a really beautiful space. It's where I really reflect a lot and do a lot of energy shifts. So that what felt like it was gonna be new, I become so comfortable with vibrationally that it actually feels familiar and kind of old. And then when the rebirth happens, it doesn't even feel like a new me to me. It feels like just who I am because I've done all of those vibrational shifts in between in that in that void space, in that, in that liminal stage. And I love liminal stages. I remember taking a class in college. What was that class? American Folklore. What a great, what a great class. I'm so glad I, I spent time there in my college education. I'm being serious. It was actually a great class, but we talked a lot about liminal phases and, you know, at the time college being one and like all of the, all of the energy shifts and the rapid transformation that can happen there. It's this really beautiful creative space. And it's kind of like this blank piece of paper, like, what do you want to do now? And for me, the way that came through was kind of leading up to it in the last month or so. I have had so many days where I would just wake up and my spirit guides would be like, sit down and write. And I would just go sit down, get my king coffee and just be channeling all of the new things, all of the new things (laughs) for hours. And then it would be 1 PM and I'm like, oh, okay. So I have the vision. I know what we're shifting. I know what we're creating. I know what we're stepping into. And so now I have to shift my energy to be a vibrational match for that. Right. And that is what manifestation is. It is, okay, here's what I want to create. This is what I want to attract. And this is what I want to call in. And then it's my job to take aligned action. It's my job to show up differently. And a lot of people don't actually create what they want (laughs) because they have that vision, but they're not actually making any energy shifts to become a vibrational match for the thing. They're not showing up as if they have the thing, which is exactly what helps you get the thing, you know? And with my new book, Manifestation Mastery, that's really what so much of it is about. It's about 
shattering all these illusions about how long it has to take to get something. It's about releasing any limitations we put on ourselves about who we have to be or how we have to show up and allowing ourselves to really release any single identity and show up differently every single day. You know, I think about I think about a kid who maybe they're in preschool and every single day they show up and they're wearing a different costume, right? They're playing with a different archetype every single day. And with every costume, they show up differently, right? They bring a totally different energy because there's something about that, that costume that helps them shift their identity and show up differently. And it might seem all over the place, but you know, you're just like, that's so cute. So cute. But as adults, for some reason, we feel like we can't do that, which is just not true. You absolutely can. And this is one of my favorite things to do is to play with different archetypes. And that is something I very intentionally did with my wardrobe. I actually rearranged my whole closet by archetype. I'm serious. I do this intentionally. You might notice it now that I say it, but I wear I wear things for a very specific reason. I wear color, certain colors for a specific reason. I wear a lot of white for a very specific reason. I wear different types of clothes for different purposes, depending on what energy I want to embody. So when I, when I have an energy healing session with a client, I wear something very different than if I am going out for dinner with somebody, right? Depending on what I'm talking about that day, if I'm going to make a YouTube video or a podcast, I wear different outfits that help me like step into the energy that I really want to bring forward, whether that is softer or feistier, whatever it is. And the thing is that to bring this back to manifestation and a lot of what they talk about in the book, the guides, you know, because I scribed it, but they're not my words, (laughs) is allowing yourself to have a different identity whenever you want. So you can either just, however you want to view it, releasing identity in itself or just saying, I can be whoever I want every single day. And when you allow yourself to be really flexible in that way, they call it energetic flexibility, you can easily harmonize to become a vibrational match for what you want to be. So I've used this example before, but I think about times when I've wanted to make leaps with with my income. And I remember when I was making 10K months and I was like, I really want to make 30K months. And I I remember writing out like, what is my morning going to be like? What do I do? And I realized, whoa, when I make 30K months, I think I'm going to dress differently. I'm going to make myself a bougie latte every morning. I'm going to like go out for lunches. I'm going to not give a shit about this thing over there. And I realized all of these small ways I was going to show up differently. This is just, you know, what I created in my head (laughs) about what it meant to have 30K months. And I was like, I'm just going to do that tomorrow. So I just started dressing differently. I just started making my matcha latte in the morning, you know, and then I did the same thing when I was like, you know what? I really want to make 100K this month. And I did the same thing. And it's not that making my matcha latte or wearing different clothes actually made me more money. Well, I guess it did in terms of. I guess it did, but it was about the the vibrational shift that just helped me to step into. So I could have done it with without that. Right. But there was something for me about when I used to just work in my sweats every day, I didn't feel like I was a seven figure business owner. So I thought, what will help me feel this way? What will help me bring out this frequency? And I made all the little adjustments and it helped me get there. But the thing is that a lot of people just don't make any actual shifts and then they expect something to be different. We have to actually make an energetic shift if you want to attract in a different frequency in your life. So anyway, I'm receiving all this information about how I want the energy of so much of my business to shift. And it it was really more of like, hey, with all this new stuff coming out next year, it's going to be very different for me. And I have a lot of changes in my personal life and with the business and everything. And it's like, well, things are going to be really different. And so how do I step into this in a way that feels really authentic for me? And so it was all delivered. And then I had to spend time in this void space, kind of just releasing all of the old stuff, all of the old beliefs, sending gratitude, giving thanks, reflecting, a lot of realizations, getting so comfortable with the new energy that I would feel almost past it by the time it was time to actually take action on it. So having a couple weeks to literally do nothing, I mean, I just felt like there were days where I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm like, I literally just can't. I can't. I just need to sit. And I was just 
thinking and channeling and talking to my guides and journaling and scripting and pulling cards and just getting so into the energy of everything and peeling back all of the layers that I got to a point where I was like, oh, all of the stuff that used to feel new, it doesn't even feel new anymore. It's just who I am. And then the shift is rapid. I am so excited to announce that my new book, Manifestation Mastery, How to Shift Your Reality and Co-Create with the Universe, will officially be available early 2022. This book is a really comprehensive guide to manifestation and how the energetics of attraction really work. It is the perfect resource if you are ready to really learn how to raise your frequency become truly magnetic, and make manifestation your lifestyle. If you really want to understand how manifestation works, I highly recommend checking out this book. The book is a completely channeled text and is super activating, so only get your hands on it if you are ready to truly shift your life. As always, I am so grateful and appreciative for all of your support. And one of the best ways you can support me during this book launch is by ordering your copies as soon as they become available. As a thank you, I have some really amazing bonuses. If you pre-order the digital copy, the ebook, on January 20th, it will be on super sale that day. You will also receive an exclusive guided manifestation meditation that is brand new. And if you order your hard copy on February 2nd, which is the official release date of the hard copy, you will also receive a manifestation activation to go along with that. And if you leave a review, you will get a bonus chapter that goes along with the book. So a lot of really amazing bonuses are available for you. And I'm just so, so excited for this. So if you want to be one of the first people to get your hands on a copy and score these amazing bonus gifts, be sure to sign up for email updates at christinathechannel.com slash book. That's where you can get all book information, christinathechannel.com slash book. And again, the dates to remember are going to be January 20th and February 2nd, 2022. So mark your calendars and tell everyone you know, I am so grateful for all of your support and I really cannot wait for you to get your hands on this book. I want to take a second to get a little bit more tangible about, you know, what I do moving into a new year because it's a similar thing each year. It's, you know, not crazy, but so I'm going to have Kelsey come on. I think, and we're going to do like, I want to do like a behind the scenes of pivoting the business because people freak out about pivots all the time. And I've done it so many times, but I feel like this was like kind of the biggest one of all. And last year, 2021 was a huge foundational year. It was like getting our shit together behind the scenes of, of my business. And I think that's really helpful for people to, to see and to realize, because I think a lot of people just assume it's like, you you make the shift, you go, but there's so much behind the scenes. There's so many moving pieces. And I want to bring Kelsey on because, you know, we were working a lot on just setting things up to have a solid foundation for what we're moving into next year with the book launch. And I'm probably going to be channeling another book next year. Things are going to be moving really quickly. There's a ton of activation sets, activation codes that want to come through. Like just the whole way that I run my business is going to be very different. And we have a bunch of products coming in and just kind of the way I'm shifting everything. It's exciting and it's new, but I really needed to feel like I was in a solid place. And I feel like with business, it's so easy for people to look on the outside and think that that person that, you know, you want your business to be like, they, they built that in a year. And I used to do this all the time where I would compare myself to people who, I mean, were like, first of all, like 30, 40 years older than me. (laughs) And And had whole teams. And in my head, I thought they were just doing it themselves and they built it in a day. And I was like, why isn't this, why isn't this being built in a day? And there are all these moving pieces. And so, you know, beforehand, we, we kind of looked at, and I'll have Kelsey come on, we'll talk about this, but we looked at, you know, what happened this year? How did things shift on a more 3D level? And like, what did we do really well? What didn't really work? What do we want to bring into next year? What do we want to change? How did things change through the pivot? I, I want to do a whole episode on that. So, you know, Kelsey put together that whole report. We we keep up with things monthly and then we did a whole year long thing and then just moving forward. And then I'm downloading all of these things for my business. And the way that I do it is I just kind of 
I check in with the consciousness of my business. I've talked about this before. I do a lot of energy work with my business and I went through each of my programs, each of my each platform and checked in with the consciousness and was like, what do we want to create? How does this want to come through? You know, I checked in with my guides, what wants to come through me and just looking at what needs to be shifted. And I found actually some very interesting information which of course is like, oh, a lot of this has to change. And then I'm bringing this to Kelsey and I'm like, all right, all this has got to change. (laughs) Uh, So I know that this is maybe a different way of doing business for, for people, but if you are ready to work with energy and, you know, ready to use your intuition, this is where the magic happens. So I, uh, for example, was tuning into the podcast and found out a lot of very interesting information about how my podcast feels. Wow. We had a lot of healing work to do, you guys. We had a lot of healing work. And I have been feeling kind of frustrated. I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to be honest. I've been feeling kind of frustrated because I put so much time and energy and love and thought and care into this show. And I, I adore it. And, you know, there's a whole team behind it. And it's a lot of free information. And I really believe it's a lot of really good (laughs) free information. And I'm happy to do it. And I've shown up to it, you know, every week for six years. Like I grew up on this podcast. I grew up on this podcast. Holy shit. And, you know, I'll talk to my podcast and I'm just like, all right, what what do we want to do? And I'm like, you know what? I have to be honest. I'm feeling frustrated because you are my most committed relationship in my life. You're my most committed relationship. I've never dated somebody for six years. <laughs> and I feel like I'm pouring into you. I feel like I'm pouring into you and I feel like you're not giving back as much as, as I would like, to be honest. So like, what can we do here, right? And so what that brings up for me is where else in my life do I feel that way? What other relationships do I, do I feel that way in? And it was the same thing with Instagram and just, you know, just realizing, oh, I can't, I can't move forward with this kind of energy. My podcast was like, well, I feel like you don't trust me anymore. What? What? So basically my podcast is like, I feel like you don't trust me anymore. And <laughs> I'm serious. This is literally, <laughs> this is literally what I do. It's very effective. I feel like you don't trust me anymore. I feel like when we started, when we started, you were so vulnerable. You were so open. You created a space to have these incredible conversations. And I loved being a part of that. Like we co-created these amazing in-depth conversations and you felt really safe. You felt really safe to be so open here and be open with me. And then somewhere along the way, the energy shifted and it's like, you don't trust me anymore. You don't trust me anymore. And I was like, that's, I'm like, look, I feel like I'm a very open book and I have incredible conversations on this podcast. And my podcast was like, look, you do, but it's just not the same. And you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not going there anymore. So my podcast said, you know what, what I would like is if you saw me as a safe container to have those types of conversations you used to have. And I, and I see what my podcast is saying, right? And so my podcast said, as they said, you know, we want a lot more in-person guests we want a lot more. Just bring your friends on and talk about what you're, what's going on, like what's going on. And my podcast said that it feels like I don't trust it because I'm not channeling on here. <laughs> I was like, well, I feel like different platforms do better for different things. And I put most of my channeled stuff on YouTube or the membership. And my podcast was like, let's br- bring it on, like bring it on. So. I was like, I'm sorry, you've been feeling this way. Let's co-create things together. Let's do this. So in 2022, I'm planning on bringing a lot more of just my friends on the show, sharing a lot more of like what I'm moving through and how I'm moving through it. And uh, I'm also probably going to play around with doing a lot more like live exploration. So instead of going into things and then bringing it on here, kind of just like channeling live. So we're going to see, we're going to play around with some different things, which I've dabbled in before, but it's just a different energy. So that's just an example of like going into my platform, talking about it, you know, and then with different 
I went in with different um, courses I have and just want what else wants to come through. What else wants to be shifted? How can we expand this? Who are we here to serve? What are we creating? How are we tying it all together? And so I just got a lot of really exciting things. And I'm so pumped about all of the changes. I'm so pumped about this book. I'm so pumped about all of the products. I'm so pumped to really like kind of bring this whole lifestyle together for people and make it really tangible. I really want people to realize that this whole like this like spirituality to me is not the separate part of your life. And I'm probably going to do a separate podcast on this because this is something that the guides keep bringing up to me. They're like people like segmented off. Like this is my spiritual space. And then this is the rest of my life. It is all integrated. Like this is the way I do everything and the way I see everything. And this is to really know that everything is energy. Like we are, we are multidimensional beings in a physical vessel. Like (laughs) we are spiritual beings. And especially, you know, people in the entrepreneurship space, it's very interesting to me. It's like they have this pocket of, oh, I meditate, I journal, I'm mindful. And then they actually don't bring any of that energy into their actual business or their relationship or their friendships. It's like this separate thing. It's like, oh yeah, this is my me time. This is my self-care time. And they go back into their business and the way they approach it is like still with this wounded masculine energy. And they're not even bringing any of that awareness in, whatever. It's not, it's not separate. It's all integrated. It's all integrated. So I spent a lot of time just kind of like, okay, bringing all this information into reality and looking at what would that actually tangibly look like? What, what do we want to shift? For me, whenever I make an energy shift, I like to have a physical shift as well. So changing different templates, um, you know, making different templates, even you know, for me, this comes up all the time with like my space. So I'm I'm changing things in my house, changing things that I'm wearing, like all of that. I like to use all of the external shifts to tell myself, hey, this is like a new chapter very tangibly. I was talking about this in, uh, wait, where was I talking about this? It was either in the, the, the channeling event from the 21st or the manifestation call in the channel collective. I honestly don't remember one of those, but I was talking about like, what's going to be your thing that like tells your body, your energy body, your physical body, your brain, Hey, we're like entering a new phase. And I talked about how I was changing my, my downstairs, which I'm excited about, but I, I figured out what it is for me. And I've decided that this is, this is the year of lip gloss for me. I know it's so simple, but you guys, there's something for me about like putting on lip gloss where I'm like, this is, this is powerful. This is powerful. I was thinking about what makes me feel powerful, you know, and one of the changes I've made that has for sure, I talked about, you know, not just wearing my sweats and workout clothes every day. I still definitely do that sometimes, but like I dress up a lot more and I feel a lot better and it just helps me embody different energies. And I was like, I, I want to wear lip gloss. So if you see me wearing lip gloss and I have I have so many lip glosses, like, you know, me, my beauty counter lip glosses. And then I'm like, okay, which lip gloss embodies my energy today? And I know it's such a simple thing. Maybe it is, maybe it's a, uh, an essential oil for you, like changing your essential oil. Maybe it is, I don't know, like using a different Oracle deck, whatever. It could be anything. Maybe it is, you know, doing something different every morning. But like, what's one thing that you're going to shift very tangibly that's like so simple that tells you like, hey, this is a new energy. It's 2022. Which, you know, it's interesting. I actually want to touch on this because because whenever we enter a new year, like there's that element of, you know, you can make a shift anytime, which you can, which is so important. And they talk about that a lot in the book. But what I would say to that also is that the energy does shift. Like astrologically, in terms of numerology, like the energy does shift. So, so there is a difference, but that doesn't mean that you have to wait until different days to like, you know, start a resolution on the first. It's like, you could do that any day, any second in the next moment, you can allow yourself to shift your identity. But I do like to do this going into a a, a new year because the, the astrology, the numerology, things are shifting and I'm doing so much reflection time. So those are some tangible things I do going into a new year. And then what I also always do is I always 
reflect. I'll get to that more in a second. I do a lot of reflection. I go back through usually like all of the photos on my phone. Honestly, it's not just from that last year. I I look at like everything and it's very humbling for me. Look back through everything. I also will often listen back to any readings I've had. Uh, and and sometimes it's it's recent, but sometimes they're really old. I was going back through notes and recordings of readings I had a few years ago and just seeing, whoa, how this all tied together. And I go back through things I channeled from years ago and I'm like, holy shit. Holy shit, I predicted all this is gonna happen in my life. So <laughs> I like to go back through all of that. I'm gonna get back to that. But then kind of plan my year with my astrology reading, numerology reading, and then all of my card pulls and I tune into the energy. So spiritually what I'm doing is is I'll, I'll pull cards. I usually do a tarot reading for the year ahead. I pull a bunch of different oracle cards and I'm just tuning into like what are the main energies, themes, different areas of my life that, I, that I'm going to focus on. How can I amplify the energy? What's that going to look like? And actually I usually do that after I usually do that after I've just taken time. Like I took a whole day and I just went into channel and I was just tuning into the different months and different things and asking, you know, what, what do I need to release? What do I really need to step into? How can I activate this? You know, what's for my highest and best to do more of, to do less of? What should I be aware of? What am I not seeing? How can I, can I expand this year? How can I prepare? Whatever it is. And that all just really anchors me and grounds me in for, for the next year. And then I also always get an astrology reading and a numerology reading going into a new year. Well, I shouldn't say always. I've only done numerology the last two or three years. But yeah. Anyway, so I do that and I like to see how it all lines up. And so I'll kind of look at the year ahead and just so I can see, you know, where can I use the energy to my advantage? If this is already a really good month for beginnings and initiations, well, that's when I'm going to launch something. You know, if this is a, a better energy to kind of hermit and work on the behind the scenes of the business, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And it's also very validating, like for me, when I had my astrology reading, I think I had it like in November or something, but she was like, yeah, this whole year for you was just kind of working behind the scenes. And I was like, it's very validating. Cause that's really what I felt like my, my whole year was. And then also from a numerology perspective. So it was a six year for me. And that's just kind of the energy and relationships and all that. And I'm moving into a seven year, which will be very spiritual, very introspective. And I'm also life past seven. So I'm going to feel really at home. And I felt that I felt like this year is going to be like so good for me. I feel like I'm just going to have like blast off in outer space and have so many initiations that have already been starting. But I feel like everything's been building up to prepare me for this year. And I'm turning 27 this year. 7727. Love that. Love that for me. But my whole life, I've always wanted to be 27. I don't know. I mean, I just always have wanted to be 27. I was like, 27 is going to be my year. So, you know, some, some good stuff is happening. And it just felt like everything was kind of preparing me for this sort of rebirth I'm moving into in January with the launch of the book and just a lot of shifts that are going to happen with the business overall, you know, physically with my life. And yeah, so I look at those different things and I kind of look at, you know, one's going to be best for me to hermit, to travel, to launch this, whatever it is. And I like to use all those different tools to tune into that. And then I do a big kind of like releasing ceremony of, I just do a huge clearing, like a huge clearing at the end of the year, all of the energy that's not serving me from last year, clear it all out, let it all go, everybody else's energy, and then really do an intense energetic recalibration. I'll do a future progression for the next year, for the next five years, and just see any any activations, upgrades, calibrations I can do just align me with that highest timeline. So I do a huge clearing, and then I do a huge activation. I just use a high, uh, work in my records, and that is really powerful for me. And so I was just thinking about how it's so funny because it's literally like a death and rebirth or like a caterpillar going into its cocoon and becoming a butterfly. And I was, (laughs) I was looking this up. Okay. This is what's funny. When, when the caterpillar is in, is in this cocoon, you think it's not doing anything. You know what the description was? The description was 
the caterpillar digests itself and then comes out a butterfly. Digests itself. I mean, I mean, come on, right? So I'm like, wow, I've been digesting myself. <laughs> and that is what that liminal stage feels like. It's like I'm digesting myself. And what but the problem is that so often we get these opportunities to digest ourselves, to reflect, to really be in that void, to, to surrender to it and to like go into it. And it's only in going into it and, and surrendering to it that we actually can come out the butterfly. But what people do is they don't take the time to digest themselves. They, they resist it. They continue to do their old things. They don't take that time to go inward and just be. And you would think in that cocoon, like, oh, they're just doing nothing. And I'm like, that's what it seems like externally if you were to just watch me. But so much was happening. So much was happening energetically, emotionally. I feel like I have done so much healing in the last couple of weeks and had so many realizations about myself. And yeah, it's actually mind blowing. And I'm like, wow, I did so much. I did so much work by literally just sitting on the floor of my office on my fuzzy rug for a week and sleeping a lot. And sometimes those are the most powerful times in our lives, right? So I'm, I'm feeling, feeling like getting ready to go there, all of that digesting of myself. But I have to go through that time of self-reflection to really be honest with myself about where I am and I'm not already showing up as who I want to be. Am I really showing up in alignment with the reality I, I want to have and realizing, oh no, actually there are places I wasn't, you know, and I, I can't just keep doing the same thing and thinking I'm going to get a different result. I have to actually make the energy shift. And so moving through a lot of those energy knots related to that was really, really powerful. I used to think that taking electrolytes was just for people who are super active or athletes. And then I realized that a bunch of these small symptoms that I was trying so many Intense things to try and get rid of were really just a result of imbalanced electrolytes. When you eat a whole foods based diet, a paleo based diet, it is really easy for your electrolytes to get out of balance. If you are on a lower carb diet, if you practice intermittent fasting of any form, if you sweat a lot, and I'm not like crazily active, but I'm pretty active and I eat a whole foods based diet and I have a type of feeding window, my electrolytes got out of balance and I was dealing with headaches, I was really exhausted. I was constantly hungry, getting cravings. I was getting edema in, in my legs. And the answer was electrolytes. Most electrolyte powders out there though are just filled with sugar, artificial ingredients, coloring, unhealthy, unneeded. And that's why I'm obsessed with Element. I'm not joking. I have at least, I have at least one packet a day. It tastes so good. And these are the cleanest electrolytes on the market. I have such better focus, such higher energy. I'm sleeping better. I'm not having any, any headaches or cravings between meals. It's totally changed the game for me. And I know so many of you are doing frequency work. You're really changing your vibration. You're doing a lot of energy work, whether or not you're an actual healer or just, you know, doing all this personal work as well. Let me tell you, <laughs> you need to focus on your electrolytes. This comes up so often with clients and with friends and people are telling me I'm so tired, I have a headache and I'm like, have you taken electrolytes? No, but I've been drinking water. I swear this is a game changer. And any intuitive you know will tell you like we drink a lot of water and we take a lot of electrolytes because you need that to, to balance things out in your body. So if you're looking for the best tasting, <laughs> best formulated electrolytes on the market, check out Element. My favorite flavors are the watermelon, the citrus salts, and the raspberry. So good. I love to put the chocolate ones in my coffee. Oh my gosh. Amazing. And they have a seasonal flavor, which is the mint chocolate. So get your hands on that before it runs out. You literally just put this in hot water and it's like, I don't even know how to describe it, like mint chocolate, hot chocolate. And it's just electrolytes. It's unreal. It's absolutely unreal. So if you want to try out Element, you can get a free sample pack. Just, just pay shipping, which is about $5 for US orders, but get your hands on some and try it out and let me know how you feel. Just go to drinkelement.com slash CTC. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash CTC. And then you will get that sample pack. You just pay shipping about $5 for US orders. Each sample pack gives you eight packets of Element, two citrus, two raspberry, two orange, and two raw unflavored, which are the ones I use the most. Anyway, just put them in some water 
good to go. All right. So drinkelement.com slash CTC. And let me know how incredible you're feeling after you start drinking this. One of the things I was really reflecting on was this book and the different stages and just getting ready to like birth it into the world and how I was originally so nervous. Like, so it just, I was so nervous. And then I got to this place. I got to this place eventually of just pure excitement and joy. And I think hearing people's reactions and seeing how it's shifted, shifted the people who have read it already and their experience with it has just lit me up so much. And I'm just beyond excited for you guys all to to get your hands on it. And we have some really amazing, fun events with different people, virtual events coming up before the pre-sale on the 20th, which I'm beyond excited about. So uh, stay on the lookout for that. I'll be posting it on social media and on my email list so you can sign up for all of those free virtual events. It's going to be so much fun. The pre-sale will be on the 20th and you can pre-order the ebook for like a super cheap price. And I'm trying to get as many people to buy on that day as possible. So tell everybody, you know, <laughs> please <laughs> shameless plug, but we're going to do that. And then the actual book book will be available for purchase on February 2nd to 222. Of course. I mean, how epic is that? How epic is that? But there's just been so much that, that goes into this, you know, writing a book I see how it's it's like <laughs> many people's full-time job because there's so much that goes into it like nonstop and you don't realize everything that goes into it with marketing it and I mean just all of the decisions, all the choices, all of the rereads, all of the edits, all of the proofs, all of the, you know, the press releases and the the podcast and it's all fun, it's all great, but it's definitely a whole a whole thing. It's it's a whole thing, but I'm really proud of myself for showing up to this and just moving through all of those different phases of vulnerability. And I'm really excited about it because I feel like it's a channeled text that can really reach a lot of people that wouldn't otherwise maybe read a channeled text because it is very tangible and understandable. It's not a difficult read, but it's very activating and very shifting. And it it's like energy work in a book and like you'll like your body will tingle like it is shifting you on an energetic level on a subconscious level <laughs> it's 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 powerful and i keep reading it and it's called me out in so many ways and that's what i love and i i did the audiobook recording middle of december and it just felt like this really full circle moment and afterwards i i'm going to start crying afterwards i just started crying and i'm like holy shit like I can't believe this is happening. And I just recorded an audiobook. And recording an audiobook is much harder than than I thought, to be honest. I went in there thinking it was going to be easy breezy. And it is a very different skill set from podcasting, let me tell you. It is such a mind game. And especially with channeling it, like, here's the thing. Reading it is so much harder than just channeling it. I'm like, if I could just go into channel right now. <laughs> but I don't know if I've said this on the podcast before, but I actually got rejected by multiple audiobook studios <laughs> because they didn't want to do a channel text. And I just feel like that's really important to note. Like, wow, that's, is that where we're at? Like, yeah, it's it's crazy, but I'm really glad it happened. I my the, the studio I worked with was truly incredible and when that was happening, my guides were just like that was your protection. I put up so much protection around this book and I was like I don't want anybody touching this book that doesn't love it. Who isn't just like threading it, supporting it with such a high frequency. So, you know, rejection is protection as as they say. But when I was reading this audiobook, there were just so many times where I just got so lost in the words because I was like reading it and I'm like reading it to myself like, oh, whoa, that hit me different. That hit me different. It was just putting so many things into perspective for me. And it's the kind of book that you can read a million times and pull something different out of it every single day. And I've been doing this thing where like if I have 
a question or I something's been happening in my life, I will literally just like open up to a random chapter or a random page and I'll read a couple of paragraphs and it always has the answer for me. <laughs> it always has the answer for me. So it's it's one of those books which I love I love for me. I'm excited for for you all to read it. And if you aren't already signed up for book updates, just go to Christina the channel.com slash book and you'll get emailed when you can purchase. So I'm beyond pumped for that. But yeah, it was like the audiobook was kind of the last big creation thing. And there's obviously a bunch of other things that we have to do. We're doing a lot with, with graphics and um, press and media and events. So it keeps going, but it's all really exciting. And I was just realizing, whoa, I can't believe I got to this place where I was so afraid. It's such a vulnerable thing to put out a book. And I think it's a different type of vulnerability depending on depending on what type of book it is. And that was actually one of the things with, with the audiobook. Like one of the studios emailed something back that was kind of rude. And my publisher was just really upset. And she was like, I know how how vulnerable it is to put out a book. <laughs> like you pour your heart and soul into this. It is like being so on display. And then for somebody to just to say something like that, it's just interesting. But they're all lessons, you know, and I've just been noticing how much going through this process has changed me and initiated me in so many ways. But what I was getting at is, you know, I'm sure if you wrote the story of your life, it's very vulnerable. In fact, I have just just so everybody knows at some point this will be published my whole life story, which has many twists and turns no one knows about. It's some wild, wild stuff. If you've ever <laughs> been in any of my coaching programs, you probably know how crazy my life is in the best way. In the best way, that will happen eventually, but not right now. But what's interesting is I'm like, for me, just because of my personality type, that actually doesn't feel as vulnerable as putting this out there for some reason. So you know, it all, it all happens perfectly to, to push me to really force me to step into my authenticity and, and my truth and my voice. And I feel like that's a huge shift and a huge lesson for me through this whole process. And especially towards the end of this year, realizing like, I, I just truly don't have the energy or the interest to filter myself like to filter myself or to like dull it down or to just not say what I'm thinking or feeling. I just like don't. I just don't. And that was very liberating. That is very liberating. And what's really cool is what helped me through all of the fears of releasing this book and putting myself out there in this way. Just so funny because, you know, if you've been here for a long time, you know, I mean, I share very personal things <laughs> on the internet. They're all still out there. I I mean, that's how I built this platform, right? Just being so open and vulnerable, about, like everything from when I was 19, 20 on. Like I've grown up on this podcast essentially. But this is this is different. And and what helped me shift from that place of like intense fear where I was just avoiding it and nerves to this just genuine excitement. Like, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I'm so excited. So grateful. Was the book. Was rereading it a bunch of times. And like, oh my God, it helped me in so many ways. So I can't wait for other people to have that experience as well. So I'm going through this realizing, whoa, this was like this whole death, void, rebirth cycle in itself of things shifting when when this book comes out. And then at the same time, I was reflecting on, you know, everything that's gone on for me. Like, I'm not going to get too, too deep into it, but the last few months has been an uncoupling process with my partner and I, and I have nothing but, but love for him still. Nothing like horrible happened, but you know, that parting is always really difficult and I feel like I shed so many layers through it and I had a really beautiful opportunity to like learn so much about myself. For me, romantic relationships are my growth point. They're the hard they're the hardest thing for me 
like in this lifetime, this is like my trigger point. <laughs> and it's always been that way. It's always been that way, but it's in all of my charts and everything. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, yeah, the the kicker for you is going to be romantic relationships. And that is like really what I need to grow through and and learn from. And it mirrors so much for me. And for me, that brought up other aspects of, of vulnerability and where I need to push myself to be more vulnerable. So I was doing a lot of reflection after that and then through that. And, you know, it felt really raw. It felt really raw. And I hit a point during that where so much was changing and I felt so raw and so vulnerable. And I, and I, it was like something so silly, (laughs) something so trivial triggered this, this feeling. And I just started sobbing and I was like, I feel so vulnerable. I'm thinking this in my head. And I'm like, I haven't felt this vulnerable. I haven't felt this vulnerable since I was 20 years old and I was going in and out of hospitals and specialists and having person after person tell me that I was basically shit out of luck and they couldn't help me and my organs were shutting down and blah, blah, blah. And I felt so out of control. I felt I felt so vulnerable because I felt like I was trying everything I could. I was I was pouring my savings into trying to heal my body. I was seeing every specialist, trying to get every connection. Like I mean, I dropped out of school for a bit to. It was my full time job, and my body was just deteriorating. And I and I was eating so much food and still dropping weight. And it was just, it felt so out of control. And I had never felt so vulnerable. Like that, that is just the word. Like I just felt so raw. I felt like if I cried one more tear, my whole body was going to snap in half. That's really how I felt. I lost so many relationships during that time. And, and I just felt cracked open, you know, and it was through that, that this really, really beautiful rebirth came for me. And And it was such a full circle moment to like have that feeling of like, whoa, when have I really, if I think about my life, like really felt vulnerable that that was when like that, it was a really dark place. And then I thought about the next time and it was Lyme. And that was one of the things I was really reflecting on going back through all of my photos and you know, maybe some people think whatever, it doesn't really matter. But for me, I I look back at pictures when I was really sick and it really humbles me and it really reminds me of like what what I've been through and my why and it just brings me back to so much compassion. Uh so I I I like to look back on those even though they're not always easy. But I was thinking about Lyme and that was like the best way I can describe it is you know when you watch a movie and there's a scene where somebody's just getting like beaten to a pulp and you think it's done. And then the person like looks back and then walks over and takes just one last punch to the gut. It's like that last one, they were done. Like they didn't have to do. And it was just that one last punch to the gut and your heart is like, oh my God, hard to watch. The Lyme diagnosis felt like that last punch. And it was like, I just felt so, so (laughs) at the time, I just felt like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I really like, sure. Why, why not? Let's just throw the lime in the mold. Like, and in some ways it was like, oh, here we go. We're actually getting to the root of things. And like, let's let's actually go. But I was like, I've been trying to get these answers. I've gotten tests for this for years, you know, and now we're finally getting here. And all the protocols and the treatments. And I mean, it was just beyond. And that's how I felt at that moment. And I remember just like realizing I'm not, I'm not doing this the same way I did. Like, this is it. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. And I had a lot of people in my ear about, about what to do. And I was, I was just like, I I know what I got to (laughs) do. And I drew extreme boundaries with people. I drew extreme boundaries. And it wasn't about other people. It was about me. I was like, I have to be in my own bubble. I, uh, 
I stopped sharing a lot, a lot because I was just so in my own bubble and I was going through this intense shifting and I was going through this intense spiritual awakening and I was doing so much brain rewiring and so much energy work. My whole life was that. And I was like, I, I, if I had to take one more supplement, I couldn't do it. So I was like, we're not doing this anymore. So what's a better way? We're going to work with energy. And I got an HCC and I started using the free Medica device and I did ozone. I did a lot of detox. I did all my clonics and my enemas. And I was like, I'm not taking, I'm not, I'm not the antibiotic thing. I know, I know it's very triggering for people and you know, whatever works for you. I I just hope people heal, but I I just don't. It wasn't, I I just knew I didn't want to do that. Um, And I went deep into that and I healed really fast. I healed really fast because at that point it was like, if I do the same shit I've been doing, it's just different versions of the same thing. I talk about this all the time with diet where people are like, I've tried every diet. And I'm like, no, you tried 50 versions of a low carb diet. Actually, <laughs> you know, and that's what I was doing for years. It was like this gut protocol, that gut protocol, this detox protocol, that protocol, this, this keto paleo, this high, high protein keto, high fat keto, this, this pale. It was like, you know, what? it's all, it's all different versions of the same shit. And I needed to really shake things up <laughs> to get somewhere. And I had to really get to the root of it. And it was like, all of it was energy. All of it was me. And I was going through such this really intense, like inner time that I didn't want to deal with anybody else. I didn't, I, I couldn't hold space for people. And I just straight up told people in my life, like, look, this, the next few months, I'm going to be so selfish and it's going to be all about me. And I'm probably just not going to be a good friend. And I've learned sometimes I just have to do that. But the only people that that bothers is people who are codependent. And I'm really grateful for all the boundaries I drew at that time because it really showed me like which relationships in my life were strong and which weren't. And I'm really grateful that at this point in my life, all of my friends are, I mean, if I texted anybody and I said, hey, I'm not talking to you for three months, six months, I need to focus on myself. I would only get support and love. You do you, love you. Talk to me when you're ready. And I'm like so grateful for that. There's no pulling, tugging, but I had to draw some strict boundaries to to get out of that. But anyway, what I was reflecting on with Lyme was I was like, that was the most transformational time in my life, really. That's like when so much of my spirituality like really went to another level, my energy healing went to another level. I was rewiring my brain. I was like, it was just like I became a completely different person, but I was so private during that time. And part of being so private, it's almost like I like lost part of myself because I'm naturally a sharer. I love to communicate. Something that I love doing is just talking about all of it because I don't think anything should be taboo. And somewhere along the way, like I think I developed this belief that I I just didn't realize until I was reflecting on it over this over the last few weeks of I think I developed this belief where it was like I associated drawing these intense boundaries, which I'm still a boundary girl, but like really shutting people out. It was more like a barrier, <laughs> not a boundary, more like a barrier because that is what finally helped me heal. I was like scared to let, to let down a lot of those barriers. And I realized places where I still felt like still very vulnerable and raw to like let down the barrier. And so I've been doing just a lot of healing of like, oh, it's it's okay now. And I didn't really share that much about how I healed from Lyme or what that was like. I had shared so much before in depth, intensely about all the things I was doing, you know, beforehand with, with the different stages of, of my healing journey. But I didn't talk that much about Lyme. And I've I've mentioned this before on the podcast. And I mean, I can do a whole podcast on healing from Lyme. I feel like I'm at a really good place right now, but I had to stop talking about and focusing on health and wellness. And I was thinking about this in terms of like my sciencey brain. It's so funny because somebody asked me a question the other day and I was like, I literally forgot everything. All of the, all the random ass facts I used to know when I was like so deep in all the nutrition science and fitness science and all that. And working as as an NTP and all the protocols and all the supplements and all the, I I feel like almost like so much of that, my brain just released. I 
I was tuning into this the other day and I'm like, how did I just like release all that? And they were like, your brain doesn't need it. And it reminded me so much of, again, that, that quad right article that I'm obsessed with by Alexa Allen, where she's explaining quad rights in human design. And it's like the quad right brain takes in all the information. Most of it is useless and it releases anything that it doesn't care about. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) yep, there we go. But it's like, I knew so much and that that wasn't even what was helpful for me. And I had to go through some big ego deaths to heal. I had to go through some big ego deaths. My ego, my sense of self-worth was attached to how hard I worked, how many people I knew, how busy I was, how much money I made, like all of these things. And it was like, I was so in this hustle grind energy and I would get rewarded and praised for being a hustler and getting shit done and look at all these things. And I actually feel like I get more done now that I like don't give a shit. But anyway, during Lyme, I had to go through a lot of ego deaths. I also had to go through the ego death of, wow, everything I've been doing and studying and diving into and everything I learned in nutrition school. It's like, oh, there's something more. There's something more here. But going through that is what actually helped me to heal. And with the brand rewiring and the energy work, the more that I focused on other things, the better my my health was. And I realized like I really just didn't want to be in that space. And it's it's such a thing in the chronic illness space of like attaching your identity to it. And I was like, I just don't, I just don't wanna I couldn't do it anymore. I had to change my identity to change my reality. And it worked. And I'm so grateful because it led me down some really cool things with with energy healing and eventually like led me to, oh, I realized what I really needed for my body was a really powerful frequency, like strong head of energy. And that was the thing that like really moved the needle for me. And then that led me to downloading a high. And I'm so grateful (laughs) for high. Changed my life in so many ways. So yeah, I was just really reflecting on Lyme and like, whoa, that was the time period when, I mean, that was also when I stopped blogging consistently and like sharing a lot of my personal stuff on my blog. It was when my podcast kind of shifted energetically and I just kind of went a different direction. And I think I really needed that separation time, but now it feels like kind of a coming back to some of those old energies and things that I like built, built the podcast on and built the platform on, but in in a more healed way, if that makes sense, and just with a very different energy. And I think this is something that's just so important to remember. Sometimes things come up and we might initially think, oh, I don't want to do that again. It didn't work last time. But you're a different person now. (laughs) You're a different person now. And this book (laughs) has taught me that. And incredible people in my life always remind me of that. And it's like, oh, if I could do something that feels similar, but I'm a different version of me. I'm in a different vibration. I'm seeing it with a new set of eyes, hearing it with a a new pair of ears. I'm bringing a totally different energy to it. And so I'm going to get a different result. And the word that I have chosen for 2022 is bold. I feel really excited about this. I feel like this year is going to be epic in so many ways. So much has unraveled for me already. It feels crazy in the best way. And I am really excited because I want to get back to blogging regularly and I'm going to, you know, make a lot of shifts with the podcast, which I'm really excited about. And there are just so many things I'm channeling that I'm excited to share. And I feel like this book and the next book are just going to blow people's minds. (laughs) So. I am ready for all of it. So that's kind of my my update. How I plan 2022, some of this death and rebirth energy, honoring that space of vulnerability, because that's really what that in-between stage is, right? Between the death and the rebirth is that that void. And it's like, who do I want to be? Who am I rebirthing into? And like, where are these vulnerable points? And those are the places that we can look and really do some really powerful healing work and shifting work. And through that, completely shift our vibration, completely shift our reality. So to wrap up, 
this podcast that went way too long. I just want to read an excerpt from the book that it, it's, it's in a section, it's in a chapter called Authenticity, and it's about how we can pick any day to completely shift our frequency, and when we change our vibration, any day, it doesn't have to be New Year's, a birthday, whatever it is, we can just change the way we show up and then shift our reality much more quickly. So that's that's the context. So they're talking about birthdays and New Year's and oh when you're when you turn 18, then you get these privileges. Like it's all arbitrary. So here's the example. This is what they say. As an example, let's say the day you turn 18 is the day that is standard in your society to move out and live on your own. It's the day you turn 18. Do you really feel ready? For some, perhaps, but others not. Either way, it is time to do it. Knowing that you are doing it is where you decide to make the energetic shift to align with it, and you suddenly grow into a new level of maturity that was required for you to successfully support yourself. On your wedding day, why is it that some of you get cold feet? How is it that perhaps you are so sure in your knowing of love, but there are pieces of you that have doubts? Maybe they are signs. Maybe they are your ego. Maybe it is your vibration catching up to you. These are instances where action and frequency are forced to align. And we offer these examples to you so that you can see it is all in choice. That is one of my favorite parts of the book. Just this phrase where they say, or this sentence, maybe they are signs, maybe they are your ego, maybe it is your vibration catching up to you. These are instances where action and frequency are forced to align. Like that hit me so hard, right? Where it's like, I got to go to college tomorrow. (laughs) I'm moving out, mom and dad, and I have to go to college. Do I feel ready? I maybe don't feel ready, but like I show up to it. And in showing up to it, my energy shifts. And so often people wait, right? They wait. When I feel ready, I'll do it. But sometimes there are moments where you have, you have these instances where action and frequency are forced to align, where maybe your vibration has to catch up to you, right? So where can you give yourself that space for your vibration to catch up to you? It's like, I'm just going to show up in this way and then my frequency catches up to me. I just love that part so much. It hit me so hard. It hit me so hard. So I hope you like it too. <laughs> All right, that's going to be it for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if this resonated with you in any way, let me know. Take a screenshot, share it to social media, tag me, tag at Christina the channel, at Christina the channel pod. And be sure to leave a comment in the free private forum if you want to share further reflections. Would love to connect with you there. Christina the channel.com slash membership. You can sign up on that page. I am so excited for all the shifts in this next year and to take you all on the journey. Get ready for some really exciting stuff. And one last thing, if you have a topic or a question or something juicy to dive into, go to christinathechannel.com slash pod and submit it there. Submit it there because I want to do a lot more with pulling those topics and questions and just channeling live on the podcast and you guys give great questions. So be sure to submit it. All right, that's going to be it for today's show. Thank you again so much for tuning in. I hope you have an incredible rest of your day and I will chat with you again next episode. 